This is a short introduction to uh, a little course I'm coming up with here to allow people to pass their gas codes test. I used to teach this course on gas codes, but most of these tests are local. This one uses the International Fuel Gas Code, but the Fuel Gas Code does not cover everything. Some of it is uh, building codes. I've put this together and I've already put out one test. I'm going to do a bunch of tests, but this one here is just to give you an idea of what natural gas and propane uh, are and their properties. Okay, we'll talk about specific gravity first. That's a density of any gas compared to air. Air has a specific gravity of 1. So if there's anything over 1, it's heavier than air. Under 1, it's lighter than air. Now, propane has a gravity of 1.5. That means it drops to the bottom of any structure that it's in. And this is important for us because it tends to pool like water and just stay there. This is, uh, if you have a structure that has propane in it, uh, we usually recommend some sort of a sensor if there's a leak. They're not required by this uh, IFGC, but not a bad idea. Natural gas, gas has a specific gravity of 6, so it rises to the top. It doesn't seem to be as much of a problem. I don't want to belittle the problem of gas in a structure, but it does tend to dissipate as it goes up. It doesn't mean you want to light a match if you smell gas. So, anyway. Now, heating values. Natural gas heating value, and this is an average, of 1,000 BTUs per cubic foot at delivered pressure. Propane has a heating value of 2,550 BTUs per cubic foot. And butane is even higher, 3,200. So why do we care? The equipment the orifice sizing and the pressures and so on like that that determine how much gas goes uh, into an appliance have to be different for propane or butane than they would be for natural gas. Example, natural gas would have orifices of a certain size for their burners and propane would have to have a smaller size because if I ran propane in a natural gas appliance, I would burn up the heat exchanger. Natural gas is sold in therms. A therm is a thousand, hundred thousand BTUs. So if one cubic foot is a thousand BTUs, a hundred cubic feet would be a hundred thousand BTUs. Okay, we're talking about BTUs here. Uh, it's a volume term, means the amount of heat. British thermal unit is what BTU stands for and it's the amount of heat necessary to temperature to raise the temperature of one pound of water one degree Fahrenheit so it's it's a description of amount of heat not really temperature temperature is involved but it um, temperature is, is the intensity of the heat but the volume of the heat is BTUs pressures we use very low pressures in natural natural gas piping and propane piping. We measure it in inches of water column. As an example, there are 28 inches of water column in one pound per square inch. Natural gas using residential light commercial piping is seven inches water column or one quarter PSI. Propane piping runs a little higher. It's 11 inches of water column. Natural gas appliances actually reduce their seven inches of water column down to a lower pressure for the manifolds generally. Propane appliances do not generally reduce this pressure unless they're two-stage or variable firing rate. They kind of eliminate the pressure regulator that's in the gas valve. Okay, simple facts about combustion. Air is about 21% oxygen, 78% nitrogen. The other 1% is assorted trace gases, carbon dioxide, and such. Now, theoretical complete combustion, that's theoretical, not real, requires 10 cubic feet of air to 1 cubic foot of natural gas. So we're burning a lot more air. We're bringing a lot more air in because it's mostly nitrogen, and nitrogen does not take part in combustion. 
Theoretical complete combustion requires 25 cubic feet of air to one cubic feet of propane. Because there's more BTUs in protein, propane, you're going to need more cubic feet of air. And then there's excess air. Excess air is air we add to the burn to eliminate any possibility of incomplete combustion. So we add 40 to 50 percent, and this is variable with different equipment, uh, of excess air to be sure combustion is complete. Okay, when fuel burns, there are products of combustion. There are three major products, carbon dioxide, water, and heat. Now, if the combustion is incomplete, carbon monoxide is also produced because there's not enough oxygen to complete the burn. That may be because there wasn't enough excess air to make sure the combustion was complete. Or you could have the flame impingement on a heat exchanger, which would cool down the gases and combustion would not be complete then. And of course, carbon monoxide is kind of our bugaboo here. It is poisonous in even very small amounts. Okay, a little bit more about natural gas. To ignite natural gas, you have to have a temperature of around 1100 to 1200 degrees. It will burn in concentrations of 4 to 14% in air. Lower concentrations will not support combustion, and higher concentration will also not support combustion. So conceivably, if you had a room full of natural gas and let a match in there, the match would go out because there's nothing but natural gas in there and there's no oxygen. Uh, I wouldn't try that. I don't think that's going to be effective. But flue gas concentration. Oxygen is going to be 7 to 9 percent. And th again, this is somewhat variable with different appliances. But uh, after uh, combustion has occurred with the excess air and so on, you will have that 7 to 9 percent that did not combine with the fuel to burn for whatever reason. Carbon dioxide, which of course is a product of combustion, will run about six to eight percent of the flue gas. Uh, there's one other thing that's not on here, and that's carbon monoxide. Virtually all appliances that burn natural gas will produce some small amount of carbon, the carbon monoxide. It's a very small, you know, most of them I see run maybe 12 to 25 parts per million. Uh, you're getting up around 50, I'm getting antsy, and you get 100, you got real problems. That is fuel gas facts.